Can you hear me now? Yep, perfect. Okay. I, I mean, I only work with technology. I don't actually figure things out. <laughs> So today we're going to do something a bit fun. We're going to take the Argo CD settings and this quickie uh, lightning talk and put them into a tier list. If you're familiar with YouTube or video gaming, you've probably seen this concept many times before. So this is going to be a audience participation. Don't lose the laptop in the sense that uh, I'm going to ask you guys to vote with me. I'm going to select where I think these things could go, but I'm going to take votes as well to kind of see what people feel. So let's start with Argo CD resource tracking. So in Argo CD, when you deploy a resource, it will put a label on it and we'll track it for, use that label for tracking. It's a terrible mechanism because it's limited to 63 characters. There is an alternative mechanism called resource tracking annotation, which for me, this should be the default. I answer this question like three times a week at Red Hat about why is my resources showing up uh, extra resources out of sync when an operator copies labels over somewhere else? Um, so this to me should always be the default. Anybody? Everybody agree? Hands up. Okay, I've got one hand. Let's go with that. And for that reason as well, the uh, resource tracking with the labels is in the, sorry, nobody needs this category. This should not be used. Friends don't let friends use the, uh, the resource tracking for the label. Now, along with label tracking, there is another setting called instance label key. By uh, Argo by default uses something called app.kubernetes.io slash name, if I remember correctly. Four years ago when this decision was made, it was a fine choice, but nowadays you've got Helm charts and all sorts of things that are using that label, and you should always change that label if you're using label tracking. While I'd love to put this in, nobody needs this. For me, it's gonna go good in places because if you can't change from lab label tracking to annotation tracking, you should at least change the label that you're using to generate things. Uh, the next one I want to cover is ignore differences. So ignore differences, what that allows you to do is essentially say, hey, I've got another controller on the cluster that's changing some fields in an object, and I want Argo to ignore that. Like, just pretend that it's okay, don't go out of sync. Again, I'm a Red Hatter, I have an OpenShift background, a lot of operators. This to me is always useful. We use this thing all the time, right? It comes up all the time. Um, any, everybody okay with it? Always useful? Okay, great. Um, in parallel with that, there is a, another setting that goes hand in hand with it called respect, ignore differences. If you use ignore differences and you don't have respect and somebody does a manual sync, it promptly overwrites all those things that you said to ignore, right? So respect to ignore differences. Hey, when I do a manual sync, don't change those fields. Let the controller manage it. So again, that to me always goes to uh, always useful. Um, along with this, there is kind of a, uh, another one that goes with this called ignore aggregated roles. If you're deploying uh, aggregated cluster roles, it will automatically get the list of all the roles that are being aggregated into it, and that will throw Argo CD off and think things are out of sync. This is kind of a variant on ignore differences, but very specific to the use case. So I'm putting that good in places just because it is so specific. Hands up, everybody okay with that? All right, and by the way, somebody can shout out if they voraciously disagree with how I'm categorizing things. Um, the next thing I wanna do is the persist health in Redis. I don't know if Michael Crenshaw made it today, but he was gonna argue for this one. So if you're not familiar with this, this is a command line option. By default, Argo puts all of the statuses of the application in the CR. And that can be a lot of traffic on the API server and et cetera D to maintain that. What Persist Health in Redis says, you know, forget updating the CR, just put that in Redis and leave it there. So it's great in terms of reducing your CPU usage. You can save like five, 10% typically with this setting. The downside is if you have things that require other tools that require those statuses, they're gonna break, right? And in Red Hat, we have a couple tools that do require that status. So for me, like personally, I would kind of put this in the, uh, the good in places but I'm interested from an audience perspective, if you feel like this should be the default, because I can see the benefits of this. So hands up for people that are good in places. Hands up for people that are, it should be the default. Okay, well, I'm only, I've got more hands for always the, def the default. So let's do that. All right, the next one is selective sync. This is a sync option. And what this allows you to do is to only sync things that are explicitly out of sync. It essentially performs a partial sync. So this can be useful if you have a cluster where the API server and et cetera D are getting hammered 
and you, you're trying to reduce the traffic on those, um, it can be kind of a short-term fix to kind of working around that. And it's come up for me, I read out a few times with customers that have overloaded clusters. But there are some downsides. Hooks don't run because it's a partial sync and you don't get history because it's a partial sync, right? So for me, this kind of goes into good in places. Hands up, everybody agree with that? Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, the next one, let's do the customized build options. So I am a big customized guy, I use it all over the place. And I'm also a fan of some of the customized options like plugins and enable Helm, that kind of stuff. And for some reason, customized loves to bury this stuff behind flags. And so I'm always using this option to enable those flags to do things. So for me, this is really either always useful or good in places, but I would probably put it in good in places because if you don't need those flags, then you don't need this. Everybody okay with good in places? Okay, sounds good. So let's do one that's a little controversial, maybe. Create namespace. I hate this option. <laughs> Despise it. I, I don't know why this... Yeah, so for me, it should be a, I like creating my namespaces the way God intended by specifying it as a manifest. So this way I can essentially test my things outside of Argo and everything works as expected. But having said that, I know there are people who live and die by create namespace. So, so for me, it is nobody needs this, but I am willing to be swayed. So let's see, always useful. How many hands? Okay. Good in places? Yeah. All right, so I think the, uh, the people that are voting always useful kind of carry that one. So let's move that up. But like I said, for me, nobody needs this. <laughs> a, another interesting option that I kind of stumbled on when I was pre preparing this one, and I never actually used it, is the resource custom labels. If you're not familiar with this, what it allows you to do is to specify certain labels that will be displayed in the Argo UI. So if you wanna say, for example, show that certain resources are owned by certain teams, right? It could be useful to show up in the UI. Never used it, but I looked at the option, and I said, wow, that sounds actually pretty useful. How come I've never used that one? So for me, again, this kind of goes in good in places, but a couple of questions on this one. Show of hands, who here has actually used this option? Okay, we've got a couple of people, awesome. And all in agreement with good in places? Higher? You think it should all, always useful? You know what, I'm willing to, to accept that because I haven't used it and you have, you folks over there, so we'll take your word for it. I can see the argument either way. Yeah, yeah. So the next one is the UI banner. This is on, essentially allows you to display a banner in, in Argo if you wanna have a maintenance window, for example, or notify your users of Argo that something's going on. I find this one, uh, for me, always useful. Any disagreements with that? Nope, okay. Um, and the next one I use quite a bit as well, which is the CSS URL. If you're not aware in Argo, you can override the default style and essentially provide your own. What I love using this for is the top bar in Argo is I like to color code it so that people know they're in production, non-production, lab environment instantly and don't accidentally delete an application or do something stupid in the wrong environment. So for me, I find this one always useful, but I could see, you know, I don't know how well used this thing is. I could see it being more good in places. So good in places, okay with everybody? Hands up? Okay, we'll live with that. The uh, next one I wanna talk about, cause I don't wanna, I'm getting short on time and I don't wanna skip it, is the fail on shared resources. If you're not familiar with this uh, option, what it does essentially, if you have two applications managing the same resource, it tells Argo to just fail if that situation happens. If you don't have this flag, then it will essentially, the two Argos will thrash, each trying to control that resource. For me, I'm kind of mixed feelings on this between this should be the default to kind of nobody needs this, which is kind of quite the span because I feel like you should never get into that situation to start with. But on the other hand, I can see the benefit of it because I have had customers come up to me and say, hey, I've got this problem this weird thing's happening, what's going on? And it turns out to be this situation. So let's start with, this should be the default and hands up, is that good for people? Yeah, okay, good, interesting, good. Uh, and the next one I'll cover really quickly is ignore resource updates. If you're not familiar with this, this is designed to allow Argo to ignore status updates basically. If you have changes in the status field, this will tell Argo to ignore those and not trigger a reconciliation. 
Um, it can be really useful to re reduce re um, CPU usage and memory consumption in Argo CD. The other issue or question about this is whether res ignore resource updates all should be a default, or is it more just a always useful and you specify exactly what status updates you want to ignore? Um, for me, I'm kind of in the always useful. I don't have experience with all to say that it's something that's safe to use and there's no negatives to it. But let's see a show of hands. Everybody good with always useful? All right. So unfortunately, uh, because we had a bit of a overrun there, we're out of time and I'm going to pause there. But hopefully this was kind of a fun and exciting way to review some Argo C settings. And if there were some that you weren't familiar with, you got some knowledge out of it. So thank you very much, everybody, for your time today. Take care. <laughs>